As someone who's been involved in the fight against HIV for over 20 years, I'm often asked this question. What is the likelihood of finding a cure for HIV? Or a way of preventing HIV reliably, or some kind of vaccine? Well, firstly, let's look at treatments. The fact is that treatment for HIV and AIDS has improved dramatically over the last 5, 10 or 15 years. That's the range of uh, the cocktail that we use of antivirals. But there are challenges here. Firstly, the antivirals themselves are quite toxic. They have to be taken for life. Resistance can develop quite rapidly if they're not taken regularly. And that because of their toxicity, we need to see that each person who's on these kinds of drugs takes a therapy not only regularly, but is assessed regularly. That means probably looking at blood counts every couple of weeks or so to be sure that the treatment itself isn't killing them. Now many of these therapies are toxic because it's quite difficult to attack and destroy the virus without damaging living cells, the very cells that you need to stay alive. And HIV, we must remember, doesn't destroy the whole of the immune system anyway. It's only damaging one particular part of the immune defenses, the kinds of cells, the white cells, the salty cells, that are used to fight things like tuberculosis, cytomegalovirus, thrush, and other things like that. So we need to be very careful about how we target HIV. And although the progress has been quite good in terms of treatments, and although the length of life of HIV has improved dramatically, so much so that AIDS is now considered in some parts of the world as more of a chronic illness than a lethal uh, life sentence. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that these treatments are still very expensive, and uh, it's difficult to get hold of them. Attempts have been made by drug companies and, uh, and non-profit organizations, the World Health Organization, the Global Fund and the rest, to make these expensive treatments available at low cost to those who need them most in the very poorest countries. And the number of people who are receiving therapy under such projects has increased dramatically and it's now around one and a half million and will be sure to increase to around two or three million people, we hope, over the next five to ten years. Now that would be the majority of people alive with HIV who are symptomatic, but not enough to cover all those currently who are living with HIV, which is as many as 35 million people, we're not quite sure. So we need to find something that's different from just a suppression treatment, which is what all these things are. We need to find something that will be as effective against HIV as penicillin was in the 1940s against a wide range of bacteria. Something that could be given as a one-shot treatment or a series of treatments that would stop HIV altogether and eliminate it from the body. We're a long way from that. And at the same time, we're also a very long way from an effective vaccine. There are plenty of things which we can do to try and stimulate the immune system against HIV, but we've not been able to find a way of uh, introducing something to your body or mine or someone else's in advance of infection that would prevent infection from taking place if the person was exposed to HIV. So it's been a great challenge, despite all the billions of dollars of research spent so far. And uh, in some ways it feels like we've not made as much progress as we'd hoped 20 years ago.